Welcome to Tech Throwback. Right here in front of me on the desk today is the world's greatest portable CD player. Well, I guess that's subjective, but it was the world's thinnest portable CD player for some time. This is the iRiver Slimex IMP350. And yes, you're thinking, didn't you just do an iRiver video? He really does love iRiver that much. I do love iRiver that much. What a cool, innovative company. And this was one of the coolest things they ever made. So I'm really happy to share it with you guys today. We're gonna go ahead and unplug the little inline remote and show you just the CD player itself here. So this CD player, take a look at that. There, it is thinner than my hand. It is 16.7 millimeters thick about the thickness of 13 CDs stacked up. In fact, the cover photo for this video is, you know, the CD player with a bunch of CDs beside it. And it's not much thicker than a bunch of CDs. So it's really cool. It's got controls all the way around the side right here. It runs on rechargeable batteries at a time when a lot of CD players still ran on double A's. And it's ultra lightweight as well, 189 grams to be specific. Listen to this. Yep, that is anodized aluminum for the top cover. So it's thin, it's light, it's got a remote. It came with other accessories like iRiver's silver headphones that didn't sound very good and a cool AA dongle you could plug in to this port right here for external battery and make the battery life way longer. It was rechargeable. It had an OLED backlight. It could play a ton of different formats. This thing was special in so many different ways, but there's one reason that I truly love this thing. Well, first of all, I bought one new from Best Buy in 2003 or so. That's when Best Buy used to sell these things. And I was in high school and I paid $200. And now you're thinking, what? That's, that's ridiculous. That's not much money. But I was like 15 years old and it was all of the money I had. And of course I was building websites, building computers, working on technology nonstop, and I had a ton of different CD players. But the reason I love this one is because it didn't treat CDs like an audio CD player. No, this treats CDs like it's a CD-ROM drive that's in your pocket. It is incredibly cool. Obviously, along with that and the fact that it's basically a computer, it plays a bunch of different file formats. It plays standard CDA, it plays MP3, it plays WMA. They promised formats like Aug Verbeese, maybe FLAC, who knows? It might run in PC one day. They promised a lot with this player. And the reason they could do that is because if you put a CD in here with a bin file on it, it could download that bin file and upgrade its own firmware. Look at that, like a modern MP3 player or a computer. It acted like a computer because when you put an audio CD in it and started playing it, it would just spin it up at incredibly high speed and buffer the entire thing for anti-skip. So it had 180 seconds of anti-skip memory. That's three minutes, basically every normal song. It would load the whole thing into memory and stop playing the CD. It would stop physically spinning the disc, which gave you a bunch of battery life. This thing had 23 hours of playback time. That is incredible. As good as the iRiver T9 MP3 player we just took a look at. And it, this had to run a motor and spin a disc. It wasn't just reading flash memory. And now for one of the most impressive statistics about the IMP350, it had eight minutes of anti-skip protection when you were playing mp3s or wmas why it would spin up the disc and just save the whole song in its memory and it could save multiple songs in its memory how ridiculous is that so that is a quick overview of why i absolutely love the slimx imp350 and it also came with rechargeable batteries, like I said. I do have the original rechargeable batteries right here. These are 1400 milliamp hour nickel metal hydride batteries, Sanyo twin cells. These were the originals that came in it and they were trash of course, because this thing is really old, 20 years old now. And I had to buy new batteries and it turns out you can still buy them today and they don't cost too much money. So that's pretty cool. These were an interesting battery that a few different devices used back in those days and they were called gum stick cells because, well, look at it. They look like a pack of gum. They're super thin, they're super dense, and it's, it's basically, uh, from what I can tell, a double A that got smashed. <laughs> I'm sure there's some specific cell technology, but for the most part, it's just a flat double A battery. And it ran on two of those. 
1.2 volts, just like you'd expect from a rechargeable battery, instead of the 1.5 from an alkaline. So it adds a lot of credence to this being a smashed AA battery. Anyway, that is the Gumstick battery, the twin cell. They are very cool. I'll leave those there for you. Now let's take a look at the player and do a quick walk around. Right here on the side, we have the headphone jack. And beside that, we have their remote port for all the data and power for it, all that good stuff. Uh, it looks like about six pins and then also, uh, you know, the integrated connector here for the 3.5 and then a 2.5 tip ring sleeve with also an outer conductor there that I would expect uh, two of those are probably power for the remote. So when you plug that in, it looks just like that. And then right beside that, we have the line out if you wanna say record or play this thing into your home stereo system, which I did many times, or if you wanted to play a CD and record it into your computer, or use it for doing live sound, you have a line level output right beside that, 3.5 millimeter. Over here, if you don't have the remote with you, you've got a full set of controls for the most part. You've got stop, play pause, track back, track forward, and of course those are fast forward and rewind as well if you hold them, and then you have your volume controls beside that. Coming on around the player, we have the external power. It takes a 4.5 volt adapter, which I'm missing, but I have a universal adapter that I've been using to charge this thing. And beside that, you have the much smaller hole where the external battery pack would plug in if you were using that. So you could have an additional two double A's of power with you. We have the signature iRiver three dots right there. We've got the signature iRiver three dots right there. Uh, they kept the three dot theme going all over this, including on the open latch. Again, there's three dots there. So we'll flip it open, spring loaded, of course. And if we flip these open underneath the disc, you can see the new gumstick batteries I have in there, some K stars and the actual CD drive. So we'll throw a CD back in there and close this thing and move on to the remote. I do want to note on the back, they were really proud of the fact that this was firmware upgradable. So it says firmware upgradable. And it also says MP3, FM tuner, Windows, plays Windows Media, the official logo there, and compact disc digital audio. And there is a hold switch in case you need to lock the controls on the player. Uh, say it's in a pocket or some kind of tight space where you might hit the buttons. You can lock out the player with that switch on the bottom. So that is the actual CD player itself. Let's move on to the fun part here, the remote. The remote for this thing unlocks so much functionality and it was wild for its time. It has a backlit, an OLED backlit display. Do you guys remember any other CD players that had an OLED backlit display? No, they all had LED backlights off from the side, orange ones, green ones, maybe white ones. But this was the first one I had ever seen with an OLED backlight not to mention a complete graphical interface. So to power it up, all you do is hit the pause button and it'll start up. We've got iRiver power on right now, version 2.30. I do have, I think the latest firmware there was on this thing. And my old one did as well. I actually don't have my old one. I sold it long ago, unfortunately, thinking who would ever need a CD player again. And I actually bought this one back for the channel to make this video. Now you can hear the CD player spinning away right now. And it's obviously spinning way faster than a normal CD player, so it's gonna read way ahead for the anti-shock. And in a second here, it'll spin right back down. So we're 30 seconds into playback. Haven't heard it shut down yet, but I do wanna talk about another amazing feature this had. Most CD players of the time, when you turn them off, just stopped and turned off. And when you turn them back on, it started at the beginning of the CD. There it goes. It's still playing. The song's playing at 52 seconds and the CD player just shut off. So it's buffered the entire song at this point and it won't spin back up again until track three starts. And track two is playing because this had resume like it was a car CD player, which was mind blowing technology for the time. Your home CD player, that one always started at the beginning of the disc your portable CD player, all of these different players at the time started at the beginning. This had complete resume like it was your car and it would pick right back up wherever you were playing. In fact, if I stop it right now at one minute and 32 seconds, when I turn it back on, it will start playing track two at one minute and 32 seconds. That was mind blowing as well. A CD player that had memory and did things the way it was supposed to work. This 
was incredibly good. Now, let's talk about this awesome little remote for a second. We'll go over the controls and then we'll go over some of the functionality of the entire CD player and the remote. The remote is a pretty key component if you wanna do more than just listen to CDs. And I, of course, did. I wanted to use this thing like a computer or at least like a CD player that I could carry around three, 400 songs on in MP3 format. So, we've got another hold switch right here on the remote. If you flip it over, it will lock out all the controls and it puts a little padlock on there that says R for remote hold. And if I turn that one off, I think I can turn this one on and the remote will say H for hold on the CD player itself. So it tells you where it was put into hold. How cool is that right on the display? Beside that, we've got a little battery indicator as well. It actually just dropped down a bar and then it went back up a bar because the backlight shut off. Anyway, back to the controls. So we have Navi, Menu, and Preset. There's a lot of functions for every single key because this thing does a lot of different things and it doesn't have that many switches or a touch screen to interact with it. So we've got Track Forward, Track Back, also Rewind, Fast Forward, and then it's also Navi and Menu. So it's the navigation for the menu and Hold Down for the menu. It also says Preset. So of course, the FM radio presets. Over here, we have minus 10 and plus 10. Now that would skip forward and back 10 tracks. If you're on an MP3 CD and you don't have any organization, you could hit 10 and it would move 10 tracks. Guess what? It even does it on an audio CD. It just skipped to track 12. How cool is that? The same rocker switch is also mode and CD FM. So you press in on it to change modes between CD and FM. And when you're in FM, I think you press down on it to change in and out of stereo. I've never done that before. I always left it in stereo, who wouldn't? On the bottom here, we've got play, pause, and mute. So it's play and pause when you're playing a CD, mute when you're on the FM radio. And it does actually have the symbol for the button on each one. Beside that, we have stop. Anytime you press stop, it will stop the CD, or if you hold it, it will shut the player off. Another interesting thing about shutting the player off with that button is if it's on the charger, it won't just start charging. It'll be external power until you hit stop and shut the player off. And then it asks you, do you want to charge? Do you want to fully discharge and charge the batteries? Or do you just want to shut it off? So when you try to shut the player off, it does pop up with a weird little checkbox menu and you got to decide what you want to do. And that is a little bit annoying. If you thought the player was charging, it might not be. It's up to the player and it's actually up to you. So on to the next rocker switch, the final one here, we have program, EQ, memory, memory for the FM of course, and then volume up and down. If we flip it back and forth, we get a little slider right here on screen that shows the volume as a graphical display on the slider and as a numerical digit, volume 17 currently. Right here on the side, we have our 3.5 millimeter headphone output, and on the back, we got a little clip. I guess you could do that. I used to clip mine onto the strap of my backpack right over here had a little pocket actually, and then I could run my headphones here to here and the player could be hanging out in my backpack so I wouldn't have to mess with that at all. It was pretty cool. So those are the controls. Let's jump in and talk about the functionality. And like I said, this thing had functionality to the moon for its time period. It was a crazy CD player. So right here on the display, we've got track. We've got the current elapsed time on the track that's playing. The battery meter for the rechargeable batteries, it says it's playing an audio CD. This doesn't have CD text. If it does have CD text, it will display it. Obviously, it's a computer. It doesn't say it anywhere on it, but it does work. I promise, I burn a lot of CDs for this thing. Underneath it, it says audio track 02. Also, if it's an MP3 or a WMA, in any case, it will show the ID3 tag, it will show the CD text, it always showed you what was playing. This may be one of the only audio CDs I've ever seen that just said audio CD. How lame is that? Underneath that, we have the file type. It's currently playing a CD, CD audio. It just says CD. On MP3s, it says MP3s. On WMAs, it says WMA. Beside that, we have the sample rate. It's 44 kilohertz right now. And beside that, we have the bit rate, and that is 1,411 kilobytes per second. And beside that, we have a graphical display of the audio output. And you've got left and right little meters right there, which is really cool having kind of a, a graphical VU meter on a CD player. Another thing that was pretty unheard of for the time. This is a portable CD player. Now, you don't have to be content with a graphical VU meter. It can do a waveform display. Let's jump into the menu and I'll show you that. So we'll go over from general to display and go down to visualization like it's Winamp. Another point, 
this is a good thing to mention. It would play Winamp playlists. So if you had all your MP3s organized in Winamp, you could output an M3U file with save. It was really simple to save your playlist in Winamp. Dump that on the CD as well, and it would use the playlist. How cool was that? Another really cool CD-ROM trick of this thing is you didn't have to finalize your CD-RW sessions. If you put a rewritable disc in this thing, it would just play it. It was one of the few players on Earth that could do that. It literally acted like it was a computer when it was playing back CDs, no matter the case. And it was so good. Anyway, back to the menu. So, hold it down, display, visualization, and let's go to waveform and then enter, and now we have our waveform display right there on screen. Now, you can't really see anything. It's a pretty low resolution LCD display, and it's kind of slow anyway. But still, it was like having a Winamp visualizer on your CD player. Back to the menu, let's go to the last option over there, display, visualization, and progressive. So now we have a little progress bar right there with a percentage showing how much of the track has been played. Another really cool feature, I don't know if anyone ever asked for it, but definitely handy. They thought of everything when they designed this. All right, back to the menu we go. Under general, we'll go through all the menus here. We've got beep volume. You can set the beep that you hear in the headphones for everything you do on the menu. We've got resume. You can turn it on and off if you want it to resume where you were playing or not. It's got fade in. So when the player starts up, it can fade the volume up like some cars did at the time. I'm pretty sure, oh, it's, it's actually on. I thought it was off. So we'll leave that alone. Now we've got language. You can set what language you want the entire interface to be in, of course. iRiver was nice about that. CD ESP, you could have 45 seconds or 180 seconds. You could pick how much it buffered. I'll leave that on the default, 45 seconds for now. Then we have the sort method, which is stop the player before sorting. All right, never mind. You can turn password on, off, and change. It's currently off, and if I remember right, you can set a password for the player. I think you can set a password so that nobody can use the player if it's not you. And I think I used that when I was much younger, thinking, what if somebody was trying to use my CD player and I didn't want them to? I don't care anymore. You can use it. Here we have the multi-session settings. It's set to on. Um, if it's set to off, it won't go into a CD that doesn't have a finalized session on it. It'll just ignore it. And at the bottom of the general menu, you can load defaults, which will reset everything on the player. In fact, let's go ahead and do that real fast. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Thank you. Is it gonna reboot? I think it just reset it while it was playing. How impressive is that? All right, over here under display, we've got the backlight. You can set um, the backlight to be always on when it's plugged into external power, or you can leave it on for three seconds at a time, or you can set it to whatever you want. You can change the LCD contrast. You can change the visualization, which I showed you guys. You can set how the tag is displayed for the audio file, whether it's CD text or MP3. You can set the time display on here to elapsed time or remaining time. Um, you can change how the battery indicator works. That one's actually kind of interesting. I don't know what that one does. Let's go over to timer. Ah, it's got a sleep timer and a power off timer. That is really cool as well for the time period. A sleep timer on your CD player? I mean, I love sleep timers. I use them all the time, so that's really cool. Over here in control, you can set the fast scan. If you want rewind and fast forward to be on, you can set fast skip, you can set the scan speed, the scroll speed. You can do different things with the plus minus 10 button. You can auto pause, you can, what? The adapter volume. I don't even know what that one does. You can change the balance in the headphones left to right. There's EQ limits. You can have auto EQs loading based on the tags in the files. This thing is out of control. So if you have a rock MP3, it can load the rock equalizer automatically. If you have a hip hop file, it'll switch to the hip hop file. That's wild. Like this is computer level stuff. It did everything Winamp did basically. Over here in mode, we've got repeat, shuffle, intro, study, that crazy feature like the T9 had, where you can loop a section inside the song if you wanna hear it over and over and over. And then there's another one in here called game. And it's the most important thing on the entire player. The game, when you open it, it says off and snake bite. And when you hit enter, it starts the game snake. Literally, you can play the game snake on the MP3 player. So press any key to start. And I think my high score on this was crazy high. So hopefully you can see. Ooh, 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 almost took myself out. 
you can listen to music and play Snake. Now, there's one really unfortunate drawback to this if you want to change the song or something while you're playing Snake. I think you could use fast forward and reverse, but if you wanted to do anything else, like change folders, you had to quit your game. You had to abandon your game. So, oh no. So my score was 2,390 right there. Wow. Anyway, that is Snake by playing Snake on a portable CD player. That was part of the 2.1 or 2.0 series firmware for these things. Uh, when I originally bought mine, you couldn't play Snake and later on down the road, you got the Snake functionality. I don't know how to quit. Now after Snake, of course, there's one more feature we need to talk about in the mode menu and that is name. You could name the player. So you would go into name and then you could pop up a little keyboard and put in maybe your name or whatever you wanted it to say and it would display that uh, on startup if I remember right. So that was also pretty cool. Uh, kind of a later on mp3 customization feature that a lot of players had and this one had it before all of those actually later on this remote kind of morphed into its own mp3 player it was a little bit bigger than this maybe twice as big and gum stick long and it's kind of the precursor to the t9 and it was basically all the functionality this had but a flash based mp3 player all right we're through almost all the menus now i don't have an mp3 cd or i'd show you guys some of the folder functionality on here it would let you go through directories and everything like that this was just really really good at everything it did okay so we got user eq one two and three you can turn bass boost on and off in these things you can set the bass corner frequency there's treble boost, you can turn that up and down. There's the treble corner frequency. So along with the three user EQs that you could make yourself, if you hold down on the volume, you can switch between a few other EQs. So we've got normal, pop, rock, jazz, dance, classic, metal, U-bass, and then of course the three users and back to normal. And you keep pushing the volume control to switch between the EQs. And there's one more cool mode on this thing. And that of course is the FM radio. So you hold down on the plus minus 10 rocker switch. It switches to the FM radio. And right now you've got a graphical indicator of the entire FM dial with like a, a little arrow to indicate where you're at on the dial. That's very cool. The frequency that you're currently listening to, the preset. So let's see, I think I got a couple presets. Nope, I guess I don't. Oh, hold down for presets. There we go, now it'll change presets. Apparently I, I don't have any presets actually set. Anyway, that's how you move forward and back through the presets. And of course, it graphically shows where you're at on the FM dial right on the display. That is the iRiver IMP350. Like I said, the best portable CD player ever made. Later on, this was beat by a Sony that was actually a little bit smaller in every way. It was, it was smaller around, a little bit thinner. And that one came, I think in 2004, and it was pretty impressive. Runs on the same gumstick batteries. Nowhere near the functionality this had, even though they had all that time to get it right. iRiver knocked this thing out of the park and nobody ever showed back up to try to compete with it. They just crammed everything they had into it and said, here you go, and I loved it. Still crazy that I spent basically all the money I had to own one of these things. and. I don't regret it one bit. If you pair this thing with some nice headphones like these Bowers and Wilkins that have the same machined finishes on them, what a good looking setup. The epitome of style right there. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching Tech Throwback. Don't forget to subscribe, and I can't wait to see you on the next one.